We're right with you. The Morning Majority, 5 to 9, 105.9 FM and AM 630. WMAL. It's 637 on the Morning Majority. We've got Mark Thiessen with us. You'll remember him. He was a speechwriter for George Bush and Donald Rumsfeld. Remember his book, Courting Disaster, from 2010. Big bestseller about enhanced interrogation techniques and how it was dangerous to let them go. He's also a Washington Post columnist. Hello, Mark. Good morning. How are you? Hey, so here's the deal. So the SOFA, which was the standard of forces, the agreement that we could have forces in Iraq with the Iraqi government, was supposed to run out in December anyway, but we were negotiating to keep people there. And the hang-up seems to be something about immunity for uh, U.S. forces. What Mm -hmm. happened with these negotiations? Well, the Obama administration bungled it. Uh, I mean, you know, in the Bush administration, we and we uh, put together that st- strategic forces agreement to keep the troops in uh, for a while, and uh, it had a deadline, like all the agreements do. And then you're supposed to renegotiate the deal. Um, and listen, what happened was at the beginning of this year, General uh, Lloyd Austin, who was the commander in Iraq, requested between 14 and 18 thousand troops, which is basically what you need to keep security and train the Iraqis. But the more important thing than training Iraqis is not creating a power vacuum for Iran to step in and fill in. And that was scaled back by the White House uh, to 10,000. And then later on it was scaled back by the White House again to 3,000. And so what the Iraqis did, I mean, it is for the Iraqi prime minister to go to his parliament and twist arms and get them to to agree to give our troops immunity, he's got to believe that we want to stay. And when we when we keep reduce when we reduce our troop uh, the troops we want to keep from eighteen thousand to three thousand it sends a signal to Iraqi leaders that we're heading for the exit and guess who's not heading for the exit and who's going to be there for the rest of their for the rest of their history mm-hmm. Iran so why would you bet on the Americans when the pres- all the president says all the time is we want to get out of Iraq end the war in Iraq end our mission in Iraq and he's only offering you three thousand troops plus the Iranians are going to the parliament and threatening lawmakers and twisting arms and offering bribes to vote against it it was a done deal because the Obama administration kept producing the troops to the point that there was no one wanted to take a risk on America All right, does that make the case then for never leaving because Iran's always going to be there I'm sorry I could barely hear you but uh, uh, the way I, w- I think you said that it whether that makes the case that Iran will always be there yeah um, North Korea is always uh, is always there but somehow they haven't taken over the the south and the reason is is that they after the hostilities died down in the Korean War we're technically still at war but you know when 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 we stopped fighting uh, we didn't reduce our troops to zero like two years later <laughs> we kept tens of thousands of troops on the Korean Peninsula to provide a balance of power and a check against the uh, the encroachment of the North. And so what you've got is a situation where Iraq is now a young democracy that is that uh, would be, quite frankly, quite willing to lean west. But we're leaving them in, in the, at the mercy of Iran. So there, Iran is there. Iran is working hard to kind of to influence the country, to buy off lawmakers, to uh, to uh, get its tentacles in. And we basically handed Iraq over to Iran to become another satellite state, the way Le- Lebanon and Syria are. How much of this is being driven by the, what it makes good? military sense and how much is it being driven by the desire of the Obama administration to have all the troops home before we enter the next political season well I think it's absolutely the latter I defy them to bring put to step out any general who thinks that we are the, the who said who gave the military advice that we ought to draw down to 3,000 troops much less 160 troops 160 troops is what we're going to have in in uh, in, Iraq, in Iraq after the fact. Let me give you. I, I actually dug into this a little bit, and there are more than uh, more than 19 countries where we have more than 160 troops. They include Greece, uh, Portugal, Australia, the Philippines, Thailand, uh, Honduras. We have more. We're going to have double the number of troops deployed in Honduras that we have in Iraq. I mean, that's the situation where this is totally driven wow. by electoral politics. And you could see it by what President Obama said. He said, when I took office, there were so and so many tr- American troops deployed in CENTCOM's area of command, and we've cut that in half, and we're on our way to bringing it down even further. What's that's your, what he wants to do. What's your biggest fear with Iran? I mean, how much, of a, how much of a role can they play? Will they play? I say that because, look, we both know that they're, they're, they're Shia governments, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, the Iraqis and the Iranians haven't liked each other for quite some time, and even though they're both Shia... Arabs don't like Persians, and Persians don't like Arabs all that much. So how much influence can, can Iran actually have there? They can have enormous influence by, just by the means of threat. 
Um, first of all, I mean they have lackeys like like Muqtada al Sadr, who's a powerful uh, who's a powerful uh, political force there, uh, and who's totally. I mean, he spends more time in Iran than he does in in Iraq. He, he lives effectively in Iraq, uh, in Iran. Um, he's a he's a tool of the Iranian government for all intents and purposes. And what they what they'll do is they'll do what they did with with Hezbollah, which is they have a you know armed and funded and uh, uh, you know operation that is uh, that is exerting their influence there. They're going to buy off lawmakers. They're going to threaten people the way they vote, and they're going to eventually slowly turn uh, that country into a client state. And you know the only thing that would allow that will allow Iraq to grow up as a democracy that is Western leaning. That is maybe not maybe not like Britain in a special relationship, but there's a country that is basically friendly to the United States and pro democracy and and responsible in the world is if you have some sort of a security guarantee, if you have some sort of uh, American presence for a long term that is going to the offset. Uh, I mean, look at look at if you look at the countries where we had wars in the in the 20th century: Japan, Germany, Italy, uh, uh, Korea. We have ten, at this moment, as we're speaking, tens of thousands of American troops stationed there. They're not there in combat. They're there to provide a security guarantee, which allows the, a security umbrella that has allowed those countries to grow up in the shadow, each of them in the shadow of massive threatening dictatorships, to grow up as democracies. And we are taking that umbrella away from Iraq. Yeah, when it comes to the Arab Spring and looking at Syria and Libya and Egypt and how things are very tumultuous right now, what do we lose in the way of influence in those growing sort of those those situations by leaving now entirely we we lose a lot of influence i mean the signal that we're sending to the world is that we're not we we are trying to pull out we're trying to get away we're trying to engage i mean if you look at afghanistan a uh, country and and you know iraq is a country where we shed a lot of blood and a lot of lives for these successes so it's not like obama's giving something away for free uh, these were paid for in American blood. The same is true in Afghanistan. I mean, he he announced a surge in Afghanistan that simultaneously announced that we're leaving, you know, in a, in a, a two years later, or three years later at the time. And so what that what that does is people don't want to take risks to help us because they, they, it undermines the very surge that he launched. Because Afghanistan Afghani's look at that and say America's leaving. Uh, the uh, Taliban is staying. Why should we inform on them? Why should we provide information? Why should we take risks? And that's true throughout the throughout the the West uh, throughout the Middle East. Why do these people? Why why do we expect these people to be in our orbit if we're trying to get out? Why do they want? Why do we expect them to be friendly to us if we're trying to pull out and leave them at the mercies of these tyrannical regimes? All right, Mark. Good to have you on the program. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.